Back to Pleasure Beach for the last day of the season, possibly actually the last day of the UK theme park season, because I'm pretty sure all the other parks have already closed. Um, so we'll get our final rides and some things, we'll recap everything that's happened this year, it's been a busy year. There's been some controversy lately, so we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about what's new for the park. Sadly we're not going to get on the big one today, they've already closed that for winter maintenance, but hopefully we'll get on everything else. And it's a Sunday, last day, I'm sure it'll be nice and quiet. <laughs> For this big dipper it was his 100th birthday this year they gave it a glow up they've given it a fresh coat of paint um it's still rough it's still raucous so you know what that's what makes the ride what it is also i managed to get on walk the woody this year which was an amazing experience i thoroughly enjoyed all the behind the scenes kind of getting around it was just so much fun if you haven't checked that video out i'll put a card somewhere up there uh, fantastic experience, thoroughly recommend if it's back next year that you go on it, it is amazing. It is a little bit of a workout though, climbing up those hills, but great fun. This is good, it's uh, a Sunday, it's the last day, and it's bloody freezing, so it's really quiet. We have walked on Derby Racer, we have just walked on Icon, and we also walked on Avalanche, which if you know this park, you never walk on Avalanche, so that was always good. Um, I mentioned earlier there was some controversy recently. Uh, basically there was a podcast with Amanda Thompson where she was apparently quite critical of uh, season pass holders. And I've seen videos from Shauna Lifthills and Thrills and Scott at Your Experience Guide. We have different opinions, but I kind of see both sides of it. Um, Sean was very much, you know, don't insult your bread and butter, your, your loyal fans, which I agree with. Uh, and Scott was very much, the reason your loyal fans are critical is because they care so much, which I also agree with. Um, it is an interesting one. I've probably been very critical of the park in the past, and I probably will be in the future. Not because I think I could do better, because I wouldn't run a park, I wouldn't know what to do. However, I care about the park. You know, I came here as a child, I've been coming here for 30 odd years, I brought my kids, I suspect my kids will bring their kids. I want this park to do well and there's a lot of competition. So for me, it's just about that passion and caring. Um, and I hope that that's how it's taken when people online are a bit critical of the park. But we'll talk about the future of this place later on. Uh, I've got some ideas, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one to publicly say those things. So anyway, let's see what else we can walk on. Another thing that Blackpool has added this year is some new season pass options. So they've always had the all year round season pass, which I've got for the past few years. But this year they introduced uh, an autumn pass and next year they've got an autumn, a summer and a spring pass. Um, curious about the prices off them. I'm pretty sure they're about hundred pound and the all year one's 150. So it doesn't seem particularly good bargain. But if you're somebody that's not going to be here all year round, you're just going to come for certain parts of it. That's a new thing that they've added this year, so always something there to check out. So one obvious thing from this year was we finally got Valhalla back. Obviously closed in 2019, thinking it was going to be a year's refit. Nobody knew what was around the corner. It took them three years to refit the ride. Reopened May time, I think it was. Technical rehearsals with mixed feedback. People were, some were happy, some were not. I think once it's finally opened though, like what, if you've seen my video, I went on at the technical rehearsals, got into the first room and then the whole thing packed in, which was great because I got to see behind the scenes. But we did eventually get on it um, and I got absolutely drenched and I thought it was fantastic. I am trying to get my kids on it today, but I'm pretty sure none of them are going to go on it with me. Um, but it's great to have that back. I do worry though that that's kind of eaten up all their budget for new rides, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So another thing that the Pleasure Beast did this year was they started a new fan club. Uh, it's free to join and they had various events. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to any of them timing-wise, but they had a behind the scenes for the Derby Racer, they had behind the scenes for Wallace and Gromit, um, and I'm sure they've got a few more planned. Um, so definitely nice to see them taking care of the enthusiasts and, and kind of doing that behind the scenes. When I did the Walk the Weedy, it was just fantastic seeing everything. Um, as a nerd and a bit of a theme park geek, it was just so much fun. So 
I wanted to talk a little bit about what is next or what could be next for the Pleasure Beach. Um, I think, going back to the comments from Amanda Thompson, as I said earlier, I think it's out of passion for the park. I want this place to be here in another hundred years so that my grandkids, great grandkids, etc., can get the same enjoyment I've had as a child my children have had. I do worry. I don't think I've seen this park particularly busy this year, but from speaking to staff, it doesn't sound like it has been. Um, I'm curious, the Nickelodeon Land launched in 2011, and I think at the time it was thought to have a 10 year lease. That would have been 2021, and we still have it. I don't know if they've had, they must have had an extension because it's still there. They haven't done Slime Fest lately. When they did the badges, the little wooden badges for the rides, they just called it Streak, not like Nickelodeon Streak. So there was some questions of whether that rebranding was going to happen. They brought Bradley Bear back. So I'm curious if that's going to go back to another incarnation. There was marketing spotted over by Infusion or in that kind of area. It looks like there's going to be there's been some filings for uh, an Airbnb or some more accommodation. There was the gondola scene and the trademark for a giant wheel. That obviously didn't happen last year, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Maybe it's coming, maybe it's been scrapped, who knows. And then, I guess, as an enthusiast, it's always what's next, right? The general public, obviously, they're happy with what's here. But there's that what's next. You see all these other parks putting new rides in. Pleasure Beach has obviously been investing a lot of money, right? They've spent something like four million on Valhalla. They're retracking the big one, and again this year, they've done the big dipper, you know, glow up. Um, I suspect they're gonna do something for the big one next year. It's 30 years old. Um, but, you know, what is the next ride? You can't just call up a manufacturer and go, hey, can I get a coaster next year? That's not how it works. You know, this whole process of selecting a manufacturer, going through the planning process, then getting permission and all that sort of stuff, typically takes around five years. So you've got to think, Icon is the last one in 2018. That is five years. Um, hopefully they've already started the process. I think they have. I mean, the removal of the Wild Mouse, the removal of the Tromber Towers facade, the um, markings that we're seeing in that neck of the woods. I think that's the next area. Now, whether we're going to see something there in the next one, two, three years, who knows? I just hope that Pleasure Beach has plans for what's next, and I really hope that COVID didn't impact them too bad, because obviously Valhalla took two or three years longer than anticipated, and that's bound to have knocked their plans back in their budgets. So, as a, as a season pass holder, as a fan, as one of those critics that Amanda was talking about, I just want the park to be well. I really want this park to be here in another hundred and odd years time. Um, and yeah, just keen to see what the next thing is. I'd love to know in the comments what you think is next for the ride, what you'd love to see come at the park. Not next for the ride, next for the park. And what you'd love to see come here. Um, and yeah, do you think any of those markings mean something? Do you think we're gonna get that giant wheel? Do you think we'll get a new coaster? Do you think there'll be anything removed? I know a lot of people talk about, or a lot of people want to see the steeplechase removed because it's janky and it's old. When I did Walk the Woody, they were very clear that it's the last of its type, that they love the ride. They're not getting rid of that anytime soon. Um, and that's one of the things I love about this park, right? They, they have that mixed heritage of rides that are 100, 125 years old and brand new coasters that are five years old. And it's, it's amazing to see. And I really want that to be preserved and I want to see more of it. So here's to the future of Let Go Pleasure Beach. probably the quietest I've seen this place in a long time. Everything is walk on. That's the longest wait we just had in Wallace and Gromit. Uh, kids been on the dojums, all sorts of stuff, just walk on. Um, I do now know which bit of the big one is getting retracked because they've got scaffolding up. Uh, the first hill after the drop. Uh, so clearly that's the section they're gonna be working on this year. Um, be interesting to see, I think. Sometimes you can notice the difference, but it's still, I still think it's a pretty rough coaster. I like it but uh, not particularly fussed that it's that shut, did he? Um, I think we're going to try and do Big Dipper. I've been on it once since it reopened and the rest of them have not. So let's go get that done. How much longer do we think the Bolodrome's going to exist? It is. Yep, it's pretty empty. There's, I mean, there are things in there, but there's not very much left. They've obviously got rid of all the facade. You've got this, you've got the hub over there. 
Um, and then Trauma Towers was removed. This does feel like, as I said earlier, whether it's in the next year, two years, three years, this feels like the next prime area for a something. I'd love to see a ride come in here. Obviously many people miss the Wild Mouse. Um, probably more so just the way it was removed. Um, but yeah, it's so quiet. I actually quite a lot of things are closed. So we, we just went on Big Dipper, which I went on on the opening weekend, I think it was, when I did the Walk the Woody. Uh, but yeah, I forgot how rough that is. And actually, bizarrely, especially the bit that they redid, the bit by the Big Blue, is mental. Um, which I guess is part of the reason for that coaster. I don't know how much more we're going to do. We've still got... Can't even see my watch. I think we've still got about two hours left. I don't know. I'm getting summoned, so I'm going to go. Bye! Two more walk-ons. Did Grand National. One side... I don't end up greased the track because one side absolutely flies around and the other side is about two days behind. Not loud. Um, and then went on the ghost train, which is always fun when you're with somebody that doesn't know where the jump scares are. <laughs> um, right, I think we're going to go do Icon, Flying Machines, and then call it a day. Well, that is my day, and indeed the season come to an end. Um, we got on Icon again at the end of the day, and then Revolution, which is... I always love how good that is when you go backwards. Um, but yeah, that's that's the season closed. Let me know below in your comments what you think of this season, what you think of some of my thoughts on things that have been said, the future of the park, all that kind of stuff. Um, I won't be here for the start of next year's season because I will be in Florida. I do have a video coming up soon to compare the flat pool to Alton Towers, so if you're interested in that, give this a like, hit subscribe so you're notified when that comes up. Uh, I have been Chris, you've been watching Coaster Dad, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!